remember those weird looking wrestling figures I looked at in my Poundland special? Well today, we're going to take a look at some fairly obscure action figures that look like they could be wrestling superstars from across the galaxy. These figures are known as Socket Poppers, although they were also known as Connectors. I'll speak about the different names later, but first of all, let me just explain what these things actually were. These action figures had interchangeable parts, and you could swap their heads, arms and legs with other figures in the series. But even when left with their original limbs intact, these were still great action figures, and they'd clearly been designed following different fantasy, horror, sci-fi and humorous themes. Personally, I really liked the randomness of the figures chosen and how they ranged from your everyday overweight town sheriff to a monstrous humanoid fly. I mean, what the hell? These things kind of reminded me of the Modulock and Multibot toys from Masters of the Universe. But to be honest, I think I preferred these, mainly because you had more characters and more possible combinations to experiment with. A couple of years ago, my kids had a Ben 10 Alien Maker that did something similar, but those were made of very cheap plastic, and despite being a marketed product, it was nowhere near as good as the socket poppers. Besides, you've got to love the tagline on the packaging. All body parts move, even to other bodies! And the possibilities were endless. In fact, the fun facts say it all. Let's take a look at these. Fun fact A. If you built three characters a minute with no duplications and worked continuously for two years, you couldn't complete all the possible combinations offered by just two socket popper characters. Fun fact B. Assuming there were no duplications in their work, one trillion people, each working continuously for one trillion years, could complete less than one one billionth of the possible combinations offered by all 16 socket popper characters. Goodness me, well clearly it was a load of bump, but it was still a lot of fun to read on the packaging. Now, there were 16 different characters in total, but I only managed to get hold of a few of these. It's a shame that these toys weren't more popular than what they were. It's also a shame that they only did one series of toys. If more series of toys had been made, that would have created even more potential combinations. When I first came across these toys, it was around about the time that Street Fighter 2 was becoming popular, and I often imagined what a fighting tournament type video game would be like with these characters. Just imagine, you could have the characters sent off into battle as they were, or you could mix and match their body parts and create an entirely unique character. The Sega Mega Drive game Cyborg Justice had something similar to this, although to be honest it sounded better on paper than how it was in execution. Personally, I would love to see a reboot of the Socket Poppers toy line with new action figures and characters, and maybe even a video game just like this. These mixed up action figures, as I said before, were known as Connectors when they were released over here in the UK by Matchbox, a company best known for their little die-cast toy cars. Seeing these figures in these packages made me feel that Matchbox had missed the point entirely of these figures. The entire interactive feature of the toys was completely lost. But when the figures were released in the States as socket poppers by a company called Ertl, which was another company, funnily enough, that was better known for its toy cars, there were definitely a number of things that they did better with the marketing of these toys. I mean, first of all, I have to say that Connectors was a pretty generic name for Matchbox to release these toys under. I only found out about the socket poppers name by accident whilst I was doing some research on some of the cheapo Poundland figures that I reviewed in my last Poundland special. But, let's face it, the name Socket Poppers just sounds a lot more fun and it's definitely a more interesting title than Connectors. I mean, even back then, if you asked for Connectors at your local toy shop, the chances are you would have been pointed in the direction of some building blocks or even a pack of extension cards. It's also possible they may have been confused with the Connectables, which were interchangeable toy cars that you could also mix and match. Also, the small photos on the Socket Poppers packaging show some of the different combinations you can have with just two of these figures. This certainly made a lot more sense than just having a group of Connectors figures jumping from a castle. And let's not forget the most obvious difference here. Connectors were sold in single packs with one figure sitting in a rather generic looking box. It certainly wasn't made clear that the characters could be mixed and matched, making it unlikely that anybody would even buy one figure Never mind a second one. You can't make a combination without a pair, stupid matchbox. But with the socket poppers, you're getting these in packs of two, and even sometimes in packs of five. 
which fully illustrates to children what the actual intent of these toys were. When the toys were released as socket poppers, these figures were just given generic names that basically described their appearance. But with connectors, they did at least try to individually name these characters. I'm going to show you each character, and on the left hand side will be the character's name as it was with socket poppers, and on the right hand side will be the character's name as it was on connectors. So, the monster fly was known as Moskos. The football player was known as Bomber. Although, to be honest, I think I called mine Hard Nut. The sheriff was Mr. Francis. The mutant was Atlantide, a reference to Atlantis, perhaps. The soldier was referred to as Sergeant, so they actually gave him a rank. The dinosaur was given the rather generic name of Saurus. Could have been worse, could have called him Dino. The rock star was called Paco. Hmm. The vampire was called Dr. Dracula. A great name, although it doesn't actually seem to have a PhD on him there. The swamp monster was called Grumo. Hmm. The Indian, which I have to wonder about that, although he looks more like a Conan the Barbarian type to me. But hey, that's how socket poppers refer to him, Indian, although connectors refer to him as Dakota. Although I think I called mine Storm the Barbarian, or maybe even Conan. The skateboarder was known as... Uh, right, well, I didn't know how to pronounce that at the time, and I still don't, to be honest, so I just called mine Chalky. The pterodactyl was known as Gozo. The robot was known as Krom. The mummy was known as Gaza. The cyclops was known as Trilor. And the rest that looks like Mr. T, ah, pray the fool who tries to pop off my arms and legs, was known as Tans. I've kept a number of action figures from my childhood, and I've even given a few of them to my own kids to play with. I'm not sure why I kept these connectors, of all things, as they were fairly obscure toys. Maybe it was their quirky uniqueness that I liked. I remember that a friend of mine brought them to school one day, and we spent an entire lunchtime playing with these things and trying out the different combinations. They were so different and so original at the time that I couldn't resist them when I later saw them in the toy shop and persuaded my poor grandma to buy me a few. Looking back, I can see that the main problem with these toys is that it was so easy to lose all the various body parts. Once you've lost the body parts, well, you're pretty much screwed then. But in conclusion, that's connectors. Or socket poppers. An extremely quirky collection of action figures from the early 90s that turned out to be one of the best toy lines you've absolutely never heard of. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's um, brought up a few memories. And if you enjoy videos like this, then I'll continue to make them. But in the meantime, this is the Big Daddy D signing out. Goodbye.